Hi everyone and welcome to this third video in the Valkyrie Sound series on recreating the sounds of Alien Isolation. In the last video we created an ambient sound from scratch that we can then place in our scene and in this video we're going to create three environmental sound effects that will complement the ambient loop and help us start dressing the scene with some sound. So while this scene from Alien Isolation plays in the background, I'm going to play the three sounds that we're going to make in this tutorial so you can get a sense of how they would fit into a scene in the game. I'm going to be using Cubase Pro 8 to make the sounds in this video. I'm just using the standard plugins though, which you should be able to find in any other free audioware if you don't have Cubase. So let's get started. So the first sound I'm going to bring in is this one. Let's drag that in and let's listen to how it sounds first of all. Okay, so that's pretty good because I think that could be a good sound on its own up to that point. We've got, potentially we've got three sounds here. We've got this one, we have this bit here, and we've got this one. So I say about here, I should cut. So I'm gonna look for a place where there's zero volume. It's just before it starts to pick up again, just before it starts to lift and become a louder sound. Okay, so I need that sound to fade out. So I'm going to the very end of the sound find a point where it's roughly similar to this one, do a crossfade, and then we have a fade out. Press X twice, equal power, close that. I'm going to reduce the pitch on this first one. I'm going to pitch shift this down by six semitones. Okay, and I'm going to pitch this, pitch shift this down by three semitones. I'm going to use some reverb just to mask this crossfade a little bit better. So I'm going to use the Reverence, and it's the Martial Arts Stadium one that I'm after, this one. Much better, but you can hear how the reverb softens the sound quite a bit, so I'm just going to bring this down to about 75. So what I'm looking at with this is how loud did the sound actually get? See, the sound's not really very loud. So what I usually aim for is a mark around the 23 point here. So what we're gonna do is add a limiter. I'm gonna change the input to say 7.2 and try that. That sound on its own would work really well. I wanna change this a little bit. We're going to duplicate the track. So that's a little bit too much. I don't want two punches. Make this editable by clicking the R. Okay, I think that's a bit too loud. So I'm just gonna lower that down a little bit. We go to the stereo out and we get an EQ and hit the spectrum on there. This is gonna show us what's passing through the stereo out and how the wave is performing over time. So we still have quite a lot of sound, actually until about there. We don't want the sound to be that long. It doesn't need to be five seconds long. So we're going to use the stereo out to fade this out sooner. So we're gonna clean the sound up a little bit more because if we have too much bass signal going through, it's gonna get quite muddy or it has the potential to get quite muddy. So here, we do need some bass end, but maybe we don't need as much as we've got. So I'm going to remove the stereo EQ from there. I'm going to select both of these channels, and in the mixer, right click anywhere on the channel and add group channel to selected channels. 
and we're just going to call this mix. And if you look at the routing for both of those channels, it's then automatically routed them to the mix channel. So I'm going to use this to equalize both tracks. It doesn't really make appreciable any appreciable difference to the sound, so we're not going to lose any quality by removing a little bit of that bottom end. But I'm thinking now that maybe I have too much high frequency there as well. Remember I wanted this to sound muffled, so we're going to go for band 4, which is the high frequency one. Um, we're just going to leave it as a shelf. We'll drop this by a few decibels and just drag that down a little bit. This is the point where we have those high pitch sounds coming in. Just see if we can muffle them a bit more. Okay, so now we are getting a more muffled sound. So we take this all the way down. Yeah, I like that actually. Okay, so let's go with the morph filter. This one has a resonance factor in. I'm just going to take that right down. And gently increase it a little bit. Now, I'm going to swap the order of these effects. I'm going to put the morph filter first because I want the Studio EQ to affect the lower frequencies after we've applied the resonance factor. And one thing I want to do just before I do the export is just check the levels again. We have lost some volume. I have another limit I set up here on the stereo out. So I'm just going to use that one to increase this 6.4. Yep, that's fine. Okay. We highlight all of the parts, press P, and that's going to select the export area, and then it's file, export, and audio mix down or control and E. I'm just going to call this Alien Third 20. We are exporting as 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit, and mono down mix. So next we're going to create our phantom footstep, and for this one, we are using the crack and crunch sound from freesound.org via Orelon. So without any editing, this is what it sounds like. And I actually like this bit at the end. So I'm going to take that bit. I'm going to go in here right near, right at the start of where this part of the sound is forming. And I'm going to stop that there. Delete that. So now that sounds like this. What I'm actually going to do though is I'm going to convert this to mono. So I'm going to hold shift, right click, and then audio, find selected in pool, and right click on the sound, convert files, and for channels, OK that. And here's our new sound, but as a mono sound. Okay, I don't like the squeak at the end. That, that sounds like a footstep. So now I'm just going to zoom in here. We're just going to make sure that this isn't ending part way through the sound. So I want that to be nice and flat. Let's just check the EQ, spectrum. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of lower frequency that we don't need. It's quite a high pitched sound, this one. So band one, cut. Just going to move that up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. And let me just drag this down a little bit as well. Just to muffle it a tiny bit. And that's it for that one. That's all we're going to do to that sound. We're just equalizing a little bit, trimming the area from the source sound that we want. And it sounds fine as it is. We don't need to overly process this sound. I'm going to select the area again. Why don't we fade out from within the track itself? Expand this little section down here, the R for read automation, and we'll go from about here. Just drag that down there. Just make sure it's and just make sure it's a nice, fairly curved line. 
There we are. Control E to export Phantom footstep number three. 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit, mono down mix, export. So again, I've opened up a new project. And for this one, the sounds that I'm going to drag in are Univ Lion 3's pharmacy fax machine and also the Lizarth printer. So if you have a listen to the fax machine on its own, it's quite cool. And then the printer on its own. So I like this. I like that bit too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the rest of that sample and I'm going to split this up. So I want to be able to fade this in. And I think as well that it's probably too loud where it is. So we are going to add these two points just by making this read automation, click anywhere on here and we want two points and we're just going to lower this down. See about there because it's quite loud. Drag these out here. And these are too soft. So if you get our mixer up and we have a look at the levels for the second track. It's not very loud at all, just 29. So I think we need to add another six decibels to that. So I'm going to add a limiter and let's knock this up to six. Get the mixer back and see how that performs. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I think when this comes in here, that's when we want this to start. So if we drag that back, so we have our sound here in track one fading in as this one's ending. So Okay, that's fine, but this is too low in the mix now because we loaded earlier on. So let's bring this back up. I really want this action to kick in after this has already reached its end point for us. So we are going to look for a cut point on this where nothing's really happening. See from here, cut that out. Now what do we have? We want them to sound as if it's part of the same unit, the same machine. Okay, now the end part, this sounds great. This doesn't. So let's revise this. So that feeling is taking a little bit too long. So let's try that. So I want the fax sound to come in a little bit later than that. Control and right arrow. It's going to shuffle it along by the minimum amount that we've set here, even though we're not using snap. I want to add some EQ to this because I want to muffle the second point of this so it doesn't sound as prominent in the mix. So let's put the spectrum on, see where we are. Okay, so it's mostly this end as you would expect. So It sounds like a little bit like a, an old VHS cassette coming out of a recorder. Let's just check the levels overall. Okay, not really happy with the hiss sound that I have on here. So what I'm also going to do is add a de And I'm going to use the, the lower one here in Cubase to snare my hi-hat reducer. And that's it for this tutorial. 
In the next video, we're going to deploy the ambient sounds we've made in a small scene using the modular sci-fi pack that's available for free on the Epic Marketplace. We look at four different types of deployment, looping, localized, blueprints, and random spawning. Thanks for watching and enjoy making your own projects.